Tasmania is fast becoming a golfing mecca. Barn Bugle and Lost Farm in the north are in the top 100 golf courses in the world. Developers are now targeting two pieces of prime real estate in the south, at Opossum Bay and Seven Mile Beach. Both sites are on Crown land. The question being asked, can a commercial development and public use coexist? Linda Hunt investigates. I love the remoteness of it, the sense of isolation that it has, the remarkable beauty. It's so unique. It's, it's the natural, unspoilt beauty of it that I think is so appealing to so many people. The rolling hills, rocky coastline and hidden beaches of Arm End have attracted locals for decades. The headland reserve sits on the northern tip of the South Arm Peninsula. We're members of three different walking groups, including the Hobart Walking Club, and we do spend a lot of time here. The peninsula was inhabited by a band of Oyster Bay Aborigines and then settled by the Gillibrand family in the 1820s. Joseph Gillibrand was Tasmania's first Attorney General. So it has a rich Aboriginal, it has a rich colonial history. Um, and all those things can get lost once it becomes a commercial place. The commercial possibility she's referring to is an 18-hole public golf course. The 116 hectare property is Crown Land. Parks and Wildlife is considering leasing the site to a local developer, a move dividing the local community. I think it's a great idea for the, for the area. It, um, it's going to attract more people to the place, uh, uh, increase, I think, income for the local businesses. Any development, but particularly the sort of development that's being proposed, will totally change the whole ambience and aspect of Arm End. Local resident Nola Foxcroft is spearheading a campaign opposing the golf course. About 60 people have signed an online petition. In contrast, resident of 40 years Lou Smith has gathered about 300 signatures supporting the development. I think this is a golden opportunity for us to keep it how we want it. I mean, that's what we wanted it for, for the children of the future. Greg Ramsey is the man with the vision. He helped create Barn Boogle in the state's northeast. With three Tasmanian partners, he has his sights set on turning Arm End into a world-class Lynx course. Any golfer only has to look at the landform here and, and uh, not only the actual um, view and the vistas around, but you only have to look at the rolling topography here. Um, it's a very sandy soil base um, and, and just the drama that's, that's in the landform here that any golfer can look at this and say, well, if the designers get this right, this should be top 50 in the world. Initial plans provide for a car park and kiosk. The focus on the golf course is, is obviously, it's the new use, so people are drawn to, to focusing on that. But it's really part of, of a very much a multi-purpose recreation space. And we expect to get a lot more walkers and, and cyclists and so on enjoying this property, picnickers, fishermen and so on. An application for a clubhouse will be made at a later date, with Marianne Bay the preferred site. To have a clubhouse precinct there with roads leading into it, it's just terribly awful to imagine. It will commercialise the uh, character of the Marianne Bay. It's a special area which can only be reached by foot. Our licence with Parks and Wildlife is very much to explore just the, the one structure as well as a maintenance facility. So, um, you know, it's not like we're going to be building a little complex or a village. It'll just be one very discreet structure and we know that it'll have to be, have as little visual impact as possible for it to, to get approval. Harvey and Jill Calvert farmed the land before it was acquired by the state government. I think it's a brilliant uh, a development because uh, since the government have had it, and they've had it now for 17 years and there's been nothing done, the place is degraded, getting worse by the day. And this proposal that Greg's come up with I think is, is a golden opportunity to, uh, to get the government off the hook in a way. Greg Ramsey's proposal would include upgraded walking tracks and revegetation. The site would go from, at the moment, feeling like an overgrown grassland to feeling like a real tapestry of woodland and grassland and heathland um, and, and just celebrating this fantastic spot in the middle of the Derwent. That is already well and truly on the way. You saw as we walked in all the, the, the trees that were planted. We come out here 
at least once a month uh, to work on these areas. So, so that is being done. That doesn't need a developer to come and do it. BirdLife Tasmania is providing advice to both sides of the debate. We still have shorebirds there, we still, we believe there may be penguins nesting in the area and certainly raptors, uh, things like swamp harriers. So there's, there's a broad spectrum of birds and bird values that are present on the site. Dog walking at the moment is just open access and that does affect our shorebirds in some of those reserves. So good management of that through development of such as a golf course um, could improve the environment. Conservation issues aside, using Crown land for commercial purposes doesn't sit well with everyone. A commercial development in the form of a golf links course is going to impact on the accessibility for the public on this Crown public land. Arm End is not the only golf course mooted for development on Crown land. The Seven Mile Peninsula has been a pine plantation for more than 80 years and has recently been mined for sand. Professional golfer Matthew Goggin has plans to create a multi-million dollar golf preserve. We should have been asked by the government whether or not we wanted a major accommodation in golf development or not. And I think most people would have said, uh, well maybe at the small scale, maybe if it doesn't affect the more environmentally important areas and the more remote areas. He wants to know what's happened to two government reviews which he believes would have provided greater scrutiny. Something very shoddy has gone on uh, because in, at the end of 2009 both the draft management plan for Seven Mile Beach Peninsula was abandoned without explanation and the uh, review of the Crown Lands Act that had been going on for more than a year also just got dropped without explanation. Resource constraints have been cited as one reason for postponing completion of the management plan and the review. Those checks and balances are certainly in legislation at present. The Crown Lands Act is still a valid act and um, it's quite robust so um, I don't think not having a review done is compromising this process at all. He's confident a commercial golf course can work on Crown land and the public will never be denied access. For people to use um, any of this Crown land for commercial purposes, they have to negotiate a lease with the Crown and we can be very strong with the conditions within that lease and that lease just can't change. Both developers have been issued a two-year licence to investigate a proposal. What we have said to both developers is they have to talk to the community from day one and they are doing that at varying levels and they have to work with the community to work out what's possible and what's not possible. The Matt Goggin Foundation says it's too early to comment on the Seven Mile Golf Course as the development plan is in the very early stages. Greg Ramsey hopes his plan can be lodged with the Clarence City Council within a matter of weeks. At the end of the day they're all there to enjoy the property, some just happen to be spending maybe three minutes of their four hours hitting a golf ball and, um, and, and the rest of the time they're just walking like everyone else. It's public land and these developers are commercial, they're, they're not doing it just for the good of the community, they're trying to make a buck out of public land and I think it, we really, the public deserves to be asked what do we want to use this public land for?